will um, that I think everybody's sort of sleeping on. Who are the winners and losers? And I'm looking and I'm like, oh man, I'm like, Justin Herbert's a, like, he's, he's, that's a tough, this is a tough look for him right, right now. Right now the draft hasn't happened. And then we sort of start talking and it's like, we have to deliver this awful blow to the people right now. And, you know, to the 31 teams that have all this optimism and hope, it's what March and April and May and June uh, and July are all about. And we got to say, like, the clear winner, slam dunk, unquestionably, of all of free agency is the Kansas City Chiefs. Yeah. <laughs> it's it, it's bleak in that AFC West outside of Kansas City right now. It's kind of uh, a, with the way yeah. this off season's unfolded. It's kind of a balloon popper, you know. It's kind of like a it's a takes the air out of the room sort of thing. <laughs> but it's so true. And then you look at the division yeah. as a whole, and we're gonna dig into it. So thanks, Hammer, for all the research you did on this. But we were like sort of laughing at the comedy of errors. That right now, of course, there's still optimism. The draft is ahead. Things can happen. But I mean. You look at what could have happened to Casey with 31 teams were manifesting with some sort of Ouija board thing in their basements the past couple of months to happen to these champions. How can we take them out? Like, well, Chris Jones will go away. They won't be able to resign him. Sneed is going to hit free agency. They're not going to be able to bring back Tranquil, all this. But Brett Veach, as always, in his bag, finds a way to bring 95 back in the folds. It tags Sneed, adds Marquise Brown, low-risk situation. Now, of course, Sneed could still end up getting moved here, but the Chiefs won't end up empty-handed no matter what they do there. The only thing left to figure out is the left tackle spot with Donovan Smith still sitting out there on the market. But other than that, Kansas City is basically running it back again across the board as they chase uh, a three-peat. They're chasing the three-peat. And it looks like it's a walk for them, at least in their division, at least now. It really made me think, like, what's even better for KC, the biggest part of it, bigger than that big 95, might be the rest of the, the measly AFC West. What, what is going on there? It is like a sigh fest. It is a ugh fest right now, okay? There's some good, but not enough. There's just not enough going on there. There were headlines like two seasons ago that was, you know, the AFC West might be the most competitive, best division, not even in football at the moment, ATM, we're talking like in history, like, whoa, my gosh, you got Russell Wilson and oh, all this stuff's happening. These days, Herbert, Herbert, stripped of everyone. We'll get into it. These days seem um, like we're, you know, this was like yesterday we're talking about this, and it's like the most putrid division right now. You can't convince me otherwise. The least compelling, I think, I mean, I don't know the least compelling, maybe least competitive with the sort of distribution of wealth that's going on between the Chiefs and everybody else. And if you look at those Chargers, I will usually have a Chargers helmet up there. I love this team. They've gone through a massive purge when it comes to the offense here. Eckler, a commander. They trade Keenan Allen in Chicago. They cut Mike Williams. He just signed with the Jets yesterday. Congrats to him. Big fan of him. Um, it's kind of stunning the success the trio had when they're healthy. Taylor Luan, you know, he said this team's going to going to make it to the playoffs in three years. When I heard that, I was like, that's not saying anything. What are you saying by that? And here's what he had to say about the team building approach uh, on Monday. When he, Delaney Walker was at the San Francisco 49ers and Harbaugh was hired, he walked in the meeting room and he said, all your traditions are done because you guys are losers. And what we're going to do is we're <laughs> going to cut the grass so we can find the snakes. It's a great bite, right? And I love all of those players. Were they snakes? I don't, I don't think so, right? They're, they're good, viable players. But I guess the more you think about it, maybe it was time to shake things up a little. The offense was 21st last year, 13th the year before. You think about Keenan Allen and Mike Williams between the two of them. A lot of games missed over time, and Justin Herbert did have to throw to some lesser-known guys. It's a lot to put on. Um, their big receiver who's going to have to step up and some of these other guys that they're going to bring in without Eckler there, that's a little crazy. They sort of set it on fire. Uh, the challenge is in front of Harbaugh, a wild card. New GM, his friend Joe. And the part, and Ham Hamilton, I'm just going to have you come in here because we're looking at this roster and the, 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 the Greg Roman of it all, is fascinating because you have this great, you know, and Roman's like, oh, we can get him to run a lot. Like Roman's talking early initially, he just got the gig, but he's like talking about giving Justin a run game. I don't, Gus Edwards, sure, but like, did he not have a run game with Austin Eckler who scored like 95 million touchdowns like a year ago? Like he kind of took away his, and then like, we're gonna design runs for Justin Herbert? 
We're going to design runs for Justin Herbert? Yeah, uh, yeah. with the injuries that Herbert's been through, I don't know that that's the best idea. And, and it is going to be interesting because this is an offense or – has the pieces of an offense that we haven't really seen from Greg Roman. He has a lot of history with the Harbaugh's, as you mentioned, he was with Jim in San Francisco, um, was a big part of the success that they had with Kaepernick. Uh, he was in Buffalo with Rex Ryan, with Shady McCoy and Tyrod Taylor. Uh, and then obviously he was with the Ravens with Lamar. So all his offenses have really been, been built around the running game in the past it's going to be interesting to see what he does with the way the Chargers are constructed and with Justin Herbert. Greg Roman and Justin Herbert. I'm just like, I don't know. I don't, maybe, maybe he's yeah. had, he's had a lot of success. He's gotten the best out of a lot of quarterbacks. I don't, am I missing it? Like what are, they're clearly they're going to grab a wide out in the draft. They have to. They ha- yeah. But then yeah, like, and it's, uh, it, it is. It's an interesting chance for him to kind of reinvent himself here, too, for Greg oh, Roman, because we haven't seen him like this. So I feel like that's a way to look. Okay. But, but it is a curious choice that's on the sexy. face of it. Because that's he, a sexy thought. Greg Roman, like, what else you got? Yeah. What are you going to do? in this? I just know that in August, I was in Costa Mesa, and I was like, I could, I was like, like shooting fireworks out of my ears for Kellen Moore. <laughs> And I'm sitting yeah. there like, let's effing go. Kellen Moore, like, because that made because that made sense to me. It made sense, like, a guy who's creative, big arm, like, like match made in heaven, let it ride. And then it didn't, and obviously injuries were a, a part of that. So I think what's happening yeah. is the Chargers, I've been with them for so long. Like, it's like my longest lasting relationship. Like, I've been with them <laughs> through the thick and thin. Maybe they're really trying to lose me. Jim's like, she's the snake in the grass that we need to get out. <laughs> Once we have Kay finally lose her faith in us that's when we'll strike and be competitive because right now I'm not excited about the Chargers and I'm actually a little peeved if I'm Justin Herbert because I think if as an NFL fan I want to see him in the best situation there was an interesting article I sent you yeah. um I, I, don't, I don't have the writer's name off the top of my head I was in a USA Today uh, piece likening him to Matthew Stafford which I found interesting. And like maybe, you know, Matthew Stafford in Detroit all those years, granted, Matthew Stafford had talent some of those years. He did. He had a good run game. He had, you know, we we, we and I have talked about that at length. But, you know, the organization, the system, the whatever. And then Matthew Stafford later in his career gets plopped into a great situation and goes ahead and wins the Super Bowl. Like, is that is that the sad story for a Justin Herbert? He's still so young. We can't ship him off. <laughs> yeah, let's have him get beat up by Christian Wilkins and Max Crosby for the t- <laughs> twice a year. This will be really. This will be a great. Oh, and then we like who's their center? Like what is their? What's their? We're just gonna like go ahead. Ninety five is back. That must be really fun for you. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, it's, it, there is that feeling that they missed cashing in on his window because we looked at it yesterday too. The price tag is just going to keep going up and up and yeah. up. That cap hit is going to keep climbing and it's going to be even harder with each passing year to put those pieces yeah. around. Him. It was Jarrett Bailey, the USA Today writer. Thank you, Goldfarb, for putting that in my ear. Uh, who I just he, he did really well. It was a well thought out thing of like, what are we doing from the Justin Herbert team? Like if you're on Justin Herbert's team, like his personal, you're like, oh, okay. Keenan, Sia, William, Sia, okay. But but the, really the thing is, the star on that team right now is Harbaugh. Harbaugh, yeah. you're the star. Greg Roman, okay, reinvent yourself. Part two, nobody loves the second act more than I do. All right, then let's go to the Broncos here. Love the, you know, like, okay, they, they do it, they rip the Band-Aid, they get rid of Russell Wilson. We all saw it coming, fine. We don't know what's going on with quarterback. They clearly have to get one. The quarterback carousel, it has been spinning. You had the Cousins, you had the Justin Fields, you had the Minshew, the Sam Howell. I thought for a second, okay, Sam Howell, come to town. Um, smart, mentally tough. Mentally tough, I think, is important to Sean Payton. I think I thought, like, Sam Howell got knocked down a lot, got back up. Like, Sean could do something with that. We saw what Sean did with Jameis Winston before the injury. He was turning the tide with him. There was talent. There was something there. Um, Josh Jobs, he changed teams, right? The the Broncos have sort of stood pat. Do I think they like Jared Stidham? Sure. Ben DiNucci? I don't know. But they can't be the only quarterbacks in the depth. They are certainly not the answer, even if it is a rebuild. And and Sean Payton, I don't know if he views anything as a full rebuild. He's never going to try to, you know, lay down and just, like, you know, do his thing. He's going to want somebody strong at the top. And there's, you know, there's potential quarterback options for Denver via trade, via some options. Like, they have the 12th overall pick. I don't think that's enough. They're most definitely going to have to trade up if they want one of the top guys. Tannehill's still out there. Wentz is out there. I don't know. 
Wilson, you know, we've, we were hearing links um, from him to other teams. So you got to think that the trade lines might be open um, to the Jets on that one. Davis Mills, if Houston's willing to make something happen, maybe. There's no clear path to a move here that makes you feel a whole lot better about the quarterback situation. But maybe, you know, the pair of Peytons running the show in Denver have something up their sleeve. They're going to have to move up quite a bit. There's even a chance if they, they might move down. They might move back if it doesn't work out for them. Because you got to think Minnesota ahead. There's a lot going on there. And finally, there's the Raiders, right? The Raiders. Oh, by the way, by the way, this whole like, I don't know, Hamilton, how you feel about this quickly. But a lot of Sertan rumors out there. Rebuild mode, trade Sertan because you could get a couple first rounders, you know, a la a Jalen Ramsey thing from the Jags to the, they got a lot back for that, but then they got ETN and then they got a guy who virtually did nothing for them um, as those choices. Like the draft's sort of a tough thing. Like Sertan's a piece yeah. you can build around, but it's an interesting conversation whether or not to bid adieu and let him go to a contender right now, but he's still so young. It, yeah, it is. And if you look at that roster, I mean, you, I, with what we know about Sean Payton and what he's been able to do, you know, every single season, even when things have looked bleak, he's competing. He's trying to win. If you trade Sertan, the talent level on that roster, there's just not a ton there. He is really the only guy you look at as like a true star on that team. You're going to have to pay it's him. Can you, can you build a defense <laughs> around a star corner? Because he can't win a championship himself. You know, like, can you yeah. do that? Yeah, and it's tough because the Russell Wilson contracts, you know, the money situation right now with them, it, it's tough um, because of what they have to pay out of Russell Wilson still. Um, so that makes it even more complicated paying Sertan. But I think he's a guy that I do think you make a cornerstone of your defense going forward for sure. Yeah. Okay. I want to get to the Raiders here. So they get. Listen. They they have a. So so we know that they we know the Chargers have a, a a great quarterback. Like should be one of the best in the freaking league. Then you have the Broncos, who is a big question mark. And then another kind of question mark. But something that gets me a little juice. Like I would like to see Gardner Minshew have success with the Raiders. They get him happy for him. He earned the right to be a starter after his performance last year in Indy. They make the splash with Christian Wilkins. We love that. Like, sorry, that sucks for whoever the quarterback is, the Broncos. Like, sorry that you're going to have to face them twice a year. That's not fun. But there is some momentum. Can Antonio P Pierce carry that over from last year in a full first season? I think so. I don't see why not. Um, but he's going on, you know, he's having to coach against two of two really prolific, high pedigree guys who are also sort of like maniac wild cards. He's going to have to keep up with those yahoos in Jim Harbaugh and Sean Payton all year, which is fun. And Andy Reid, by the way, I guess I should mention maybe the greatest coach of all time, Andy Reid in that division. So that's interesting. Uh, it doesn't seem to be a long term plan, though, with Minshew, right? And they lose Josh Jacobs. That had to be hard. He was a huge part almost like uh, the identity. They have Zamir White and Alexander Madison and veteran Amir Abdullah. Okay, is that enough to fill that void? Is that enough to help Gardner out? Uh, can they repeat what they did? I don't know. Lots of bulletin board material that they've been feeding KC, by the way, this offseason. So a lot of questions about the franchise. A lot of, like, restructuring going on out west. I don't know. KC's at the top, and then everybody else needs to figure it out. And maybe everybody wows me and everybody in the draft. Who out of those three teams... I guess you'd have to say it's the Chargers that are the biggest contender to this thing, especially with all the questions at quarterback with Minshew and the Broncos. I don't know. Um, okay, we're going to 